Welcome to the CSBP Fertilizers Grow Better podcast, sharing knowledge with growers on leading crop nutrition, sustainable agriculture, and other issues impacting the agricultural industry. G'day, welcome to the CSBP Grow Better podcast. My name's Gray Johnston, and I'm joined here today by CSBP Senior Digital Agriculture Specialist, Doug Hamilton. Welcome, Doug. Thanks, Gray. Good to be here. Now we're talking about CSBP Detect today, and Doug, you've been leading the charge on CSBP Detect for, well, five or six years now. Tell us about Detect, what is it? How did it come about? What's the process been? CSBP Detect's based off uh, infrared spectroscopy. So, it came about, oh, the initial work would have started from 2015, where what the initial, um, the initial idea behind this was, is how can, we, how can we get a quicker turnaround to growers to understand the nutrient status of their plant? So do I need more N? Is K limiting? Is P limiting? And so the broad idea was that we would look to see what technology was available in the market at the moment or what technology was coming on to the market which we'd be able to use to identify the the nutrient content in plants and we 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 did a bit of a desktop study and we spoke to a number of people uh, this is from about 2015 and we we looked at a range of technology so we looked at drones at that point as well um, multi-spectral cameras on drones uh, things like hyperspectral cameras as well um, and those, those kind of things were, were really expensive at that point. They were also really hard to implement because you're dealing with um, a lot of data. We've got one of the uh, CSBP Detect devices here with us today. You've been involved with the project right from the start. What provided the impetus for this project? What was the problem that the grower was trying to solve or we're trying to help the grower solve? What we were trying to solve was that with traditional plant sampling, the turnaround time is, is not quick enough for the grower to be able to take a sample, get that to the lab, get the results back, and then make a decision on whether they needed to apply more nitrogen or not. So we use soil sampling at the start of the season to build a bit of a plan. But as the season unfolds, the, the information that comes through to the grower um, and the, what they're trying to make in terms of a, of a decision is, is a bit of a black box. Like they're, they're not sure, do I need the nitrogen? Don't I need the nitrogen? Mm -hmm. has, the, has the organic matter mineralized into enough nitrogen for my crop to finish the season? Yep. And so with traditional plant sampling, you go out and you pull the samples, or pull the plants out to, to form the samples, send that to the lab. By the time you get the results back, quite often the grower's already made the decision and this just tells him whether he made the right decision mm -hmm. or not. And so the, the idea with, with Detect is that we're able to go out and we're able to scan the, the crops in the field, get those results back in, in pretty much real time. So if the grower can see a reasonable rainfall events coming in the next couple of days or within the next week, they can actually make the plan and the logistics and be more confident in making that decision around nitrogen. So the challenge you set yourself was, we want to get some sort of real time measure of nutrients so that growers can make quick decisions and you looked at a whole bunch of different technologies and the answer sounds like it was near infrared spectroscopy. Yep. And how we, we landed on that answer, what's happened since then? Since then, we, we, we did our initial work on some very large, expensive laboratory type devices. So these things were, they're, they're, they're very sensitive, they're very expensive as well. I think the device that, we've st that we still use for this kind of work, it cost us about 120 grand this isn't a commercial solution. No grower is going to spend 100 grand on this, but it allowed us to validate that the technology, so infrared spectroscopy, can work for us to be able to, um, uh, to, to get to a nutrient content in plants, especially nitrogen. There, we, we had some initial work that indicated that we could look at other nutrients as well, which gave us the, 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 the impetus and it gave us the confidence that, yes, this is, this, this is the technology that we want to use. So the next part was, uh, well, what device can we use? We're not going to use these laboratory style devices. We're going to use um, something that needs to be smaller, that we can package, that's going to be useful for actually using in the field. So where we ended up was we then went and looked at a range of different spectrometers. Um, some of them you needed to be tethered to a computer, so that wasn't, that wasn't ideal. Um, some of them were um, pretty flaky with their with, their, uh, with the way that they measured light or they weren't measuring a broad enough part of that infrared light spectrum as well. They were only measuring a small part over here or a small part over there and it didn't cover the main regions where we would expect to be able to pick up um, elements like nitrogen. And we ended up with a device 
which we built the housing around ourselves because it needed to be fit for purpose to be used in the field. It's, it's not something we're going to sort of let roll around in the, the, the tray of a ute, for example, because it still is a, is a very um, sensitive scientific instrument. So talk me through the process of taking a test. What, what exactly are we doing and what do we get out of it? So with what we're, what we're doing with CSBP Detect, um, there's a few different approaches to this, but the, the quick ad hoc version is we would go out into the field. So ideally you would look at where in the paddock we need to be sampling. You don't want to sample just the best parts or just the poor parts of the paddock. So using, using platforms like Decipher is great to be able to look at where the imagery is or using the imagery to work out where in the paddock we should be sampling. Go to those areas, pull up some plants, um, you load them into the device, so you load the leaves against the lid and you hold the lid. The device connects via Bluetooth to a smartphone, so we've developed our own smartphone application that communicates between the device and then off to the cloud where all the modelling takes place. Um, and from there we're able to then have those models return a result back to the smartphone application and it will tell us the nitrogen percent of the plant and we can then move from there into a status to understand whether you know, based on the amount of rainfall we've had, the yield potential of the season at the moment, um, is, our, is our crop looking like it's marginal or is it sufficient? And that's, and that's what we're using to, to present to growers where the crops are at and whether they need that nitrogen or not. And you've run a couple of pilots over the last couple of seasons. What sort of results have we seen? What's the feedback been from growers who've, who've been using the device? There's a, there's a range of feedback. Um, so in some cases, we, we're recommending to apply more fertiliser. In other cases, we're recommending to, to, to withhold that additional application that they thought they might need. Because it's not needed? Because it's not needed. Yeah. Um, and with, with the way that a lot of people have interacted with the device and, and the, the outputs from the devices, it's not, it's not always going to tell them that they need fertiliser. And, and that's not necessarily something that isn't valuable to the grower as well, because that, that idea of having this as a sense check I'm on the right path. The growers actually get a lot of value out of that as well. But then it's also at being able to understand whether they have got a limitation and it's nitrogen and to be able to apply that nitrogen with confidence. And then at the end of the, end of the season, seeing that they, you know, they get better yields than they thought they were going to and the protein hasn't dropped out too much as well. Yeah. So as you say, a bit of a black box, but anything that can help remove some of that, that uncertainty when people are making these big decisions around top-up nitrogen is going to be helpful and it sounds like it's been helpful for the what hundred odd growers who have been involved in the pilot over the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah, it'd be, be pretty close to that, mm -hmm. about a hundred odd, uh, hundred growers and like I said there's been a range of, a range of um, things that the growers have taken out of it. There's uh, another example where there was a grower that um, he, had some, he had a set budget for his, for his nitrogen um, for whatever reason, the bank wasn't going to lend him any more or that was what he was going to use in terms of his budget. He could see that he had had some canola crops that got in early and those canola crops were looking quite, quite deficient. You could see visual symptoms on there at that mm -hmm. point. Um, he was planning on further applications of nitrogen onto his barley crops. He could see um, from the scans, we went out and did that. We went and did some scans in the morning or the local area manager did. Um, from there we could see that the, the late sown barley was looking really sufficient. Its yield potential probably wasn't as good as the earlier sown barley, so less yield potential. It doesn't actually need that additional nitrogen and we're able to see that in the results comparing the earlier sown barley versus the later sown barley. And that gave the grower a lot more confidence to take that nitrogen off his barley and put it on the canola. That's a really neat example. So having the real-time information helps I guess make those massaging the nitrogen use decisions during the year and helps you make those decisions really quickly where plant testing like traditional tissue testing just wouldn't have wouldn't have enabled that kind of quick decision making and maybe people would have just stuck with the original plan yeah and and in the case of of the grower in that um when you look at the cost of nitrogen last year which is uh you know it, there's always a cost involved in nitrogen but for something like barley last year applying more nitrogen to get higher protein in barley wasn't going to pay back. Yeah. You might have got a bit more yield, but when the barley prices are $250 a tonne and you might grow an extra couple of hundred kilos, you might have pushed, the, pushed your um, margins per hectare or your, your profit per hectare up, up at maybe $100 as opposed to taking that same amount of nitrogen and putting it into canola, which is worth over $1,000 a tonne. So 300 kilos extra in canola is going to give you $300 a tonne versus you know, $150 a 
or hundred dollars by putting that nitrogen on the on the barley instead. So that was a really good example of where we were able to turn those results around quickly. So effectively, we did the scans in the morning. The grower started implementing that action that afternoon. And in terms of development of the device, is there still a roadmap to keep improving the device? We've got calibrations models, calibration models built for nitrogen on wheat and barley at the moment. Um, we've still got more data that we need to collect around canola to bring that model up to a point where the um, where the accuracy is at a level that's that's going to be good enough. Um, and from there, it's a case of working out what other crops we need to look at. But we know that the same technology that we use in these devices can also be used to look at protein um, and oil in canola, so protein in barley and wheat. So yep. scanning the grain, for example, and uh, the oil content in the canola grain. Um, we, we also know, we've also, and we've done the work to build a model for that and we know that's quite reasonable so that's good to know um, and working out how we integrate that we'll need to do a bit of homework and work out that yeah. because uh, probably the big competitor there is protein meters on a, on, a, on a harvester which are becoming more prevalent but it's really good information to have um, and then you know we, we know we can also look at things like carbon in, in soil as well which is also quite a topical um, concept. So one of the ways you're bringing this to the market this year, Doug, is through a new package, CSPP Detect Plus. Can you tell us about that? What's involved? CSPP Detect Plus has come about from a lot of the learnings that we made in the previous pilot where we want to leverage some of the tools that we've already developed. We want to onboard the grower, look at their farm maps, make sure they're up to date, using imagery to define where in the paddocks we should be sampling and make sure that we do do the sampling there. Um, so once we've done that, we've moved to soil sampling. So this provides like a, a base level of where the nutrient status is sitting for the soil. What's the recommendations for NPKS for the season? And this is, this is the, the, the planning stage, essentially. From there, we move into plant sampling where we pick up any early season limitations. So the plant sampling is the best, um, best way to pick up things like potassium deficiencies and also trace elements. Yep. Using the plant sampling, it gives us a lot more confidence if, we, if there is other limitations that we can address those in time for the season. And then from that point, we use the CSBP detect device to monitor the nitrogen levels, look at how the season's unfolding. If the season's looking good, you know, we, we're a lot more confident putting nitrogen out and we can see what the status of the plants are in terms of nitrogen. And at the end of the season, we'll go back to those same locations that we've been sampling for soil, for plant and for detect and we'll take grain samples. And from there, we can look at what the actual, or, or give us a good idea of what the yield was yep. at those sites. And it will also tell us the protein in the grain, and it'll also tell us all the other nutrients that we've applied. So how much nitrogen, how much phosphorus, how much potassium, and how many trace, and what, what also in terms of trace elements has been removed from the crop. So it gives us an idea of what we'd planned at the start of the season, what's actually happened, and what's occurred as a result of that. And then taking those learnings in terms of the removal rates and applying that to the next season's applications as well. Did we underdo the K? Was, how much K did we remove? Did we underdo P? Are we overdoing P? All those kind of decisions. So the idea is it gives us a full loop of, and uh, like a full season nutrition for, um, for our growers. That I, love the, I love the concept. Understand what's in the soil, understand what we need to do to grow the crop, make sure we're doing a good job during the season, and then let's go back and review. And um, I, I really like the concept. If there's people out there listening who do love the concept, what can they do? Um, how can, they, how can they, they get their hands on, hands on one of these and, and start measuring their nitrogen in real time during the season? The account manager is going to have devices. They'll be able to do at least parts of that um, full season package with CSPP Detect Plus. So just reach out to your local um, CSPP account manager and um, they'll be able to put you in touch with us. Awesome. So thanks so much, Doug, for joining us today. And we really look forward to seeing how the first season of CSBP Detect Plus goes out in the field. And for anyone who's interested in using a CSBP Detect ad hoc during the season as well, as Doug said, they're going to reach out to your uh, local account manager. That's it for us today on the CSBP Grow Better podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember to subscribe, rate and review. And uh, if you've got any suggestions or feedback uh, on the show, uh, slide into our DMs at CSBP Fertilisers at any of your uh, favourite social media platforms. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Gray Johnston. Uh, we've been CSBP Grow Better Podcast. See you later. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the CSBP Grow Better Podcast. For more information about CSBP, please visit csbp-fertilisers.com.au or connect with us on social media at CSBP Fertilisers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn.